Hi guys, Bruce here. Well, we got another craftsman with that crazy dust blocker bag that doesn't block dust. This one, I think, it looks like it gave up the ghost and they just put it outside. Because look at the, that's, that's rain and mud schmoo. It's a, okay. Briggs Classic with the, oop, Briggs Classic with the, uh, gas tank below the carburetor 158 cc so that's the upgraded newer uh, classic I've seen a few of those this year it's got the 5000 ohm spark plug adapter it is ugly and already I, I've always said that you oops I've always said you can find there will be three things wrong with every mower well this thing's got three things wrong with it right out of the gate hey eh? This cable, the stop and start cable, that's where it quit right there, right? You see that? It has the, um, somebody got clever. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this when you don't know anything about lawnmowers, right? There we go, right? Right there. But they didn't even do a left over right and a right over left reef nut. And uh, what else is wrong with this guy? Air filters loose and backwards. There. Sorry, I'm looking. I'm not looking at the camera viewfinder. So let's now. I'm going to take that cable off of there. I'm going to. I'm going to uh, take the hood off, and see if I can tie wrap the brake, and then we can start it and stop it by pulling the plug. It's got gas in it. And if it does all that, you know, that's fairly easy stuff. I'm, and then I'm going to power wash it. Because it's got all that schmoo on it, eh? So let's just get some side cutters. Okay, that's one, one job. Okay, so I can get the cable to move inside that sheath. Let's take the cover off. Maybe. And I'm going to just tie wrap this uh, throttle down. A little bit of plastic or nylon or whatever you want to call it. Alright, let's go. Channel locks, get a pair. Just get a pair. Should I go this way? Apparently so. enough to generate a spark. <laughs> Good. Okay. That's two, right? Let's have a look at the air filter. Did you get some of that? I hope I wasn't kneeling over your face. Let's just take this off. And, oh, it's a Murray. It's, is it a Murray? It might be. Yep, it's a Murray. Uh, so right there, if I push this little bulb and we get fuel coming in there, that, that's half of our battle. Yeah, it's, it's going to fire. Okay. So now we've got... It's got oil. I checked that. Our throttle. Oh is done and we have fuel the gas looks okay so now can I get this off of here good put that back on there like good now we're gonna give it a start see if it starts
crank, guys. It's running like it's got water in it. Let's just dump out fuel. And when you get a lot more from when you you know probably from a dump or a landfill or something, you just don't know, right? That'll do. Okay, I'm going to dump most of this out to here. Not very good gas. Alright, let's stop there. Alright, my friends. Oops. Can you guys see that? How much water is in there? Boat to there. And, it's, and that milkiness is the ethanol picking up the water. So if we just let that sit for a little bit, uh, it's even going to have more water in there than we thought. So, yes, that's good. All right, my friends. Let's see if it goes. We'll take this off. If it comes off, well, this will come off. And tie, uh, tie cutters, take that tie wrap off of there. And I want to see if it fires up. Good because remember, they got water in the fuel. With a half a tank, sixty-four dollars worth of gas. Now let's see if it starts up when it's wet. It's got a slight miss and it's running at 3200 RPMs. I use these. These are inductive. You just have to touch that little post on the high tension wire and it does a good job of reading the RPMs. All right. Beautiful blade, but it's on upside down. So I'm going to just turn it over because it's actually in good condition. All right. So look at that, that blade's hardly been used. And I'm not even going to sharpen it because all I'm going to do is just take off material. So on a blade, you, the flange should not cover the blade adapter. The flange should, on these MTDs, the flange should come, the flange on the blade should almost go away from the blade adapter. Crazy, eh? There we go. Probably working pretty lousy. That was probably working pretty lousy. <laughs> and a good blade to boot. So you know what happened, eh? They took the blade off, they sharpened it, did a good job, and then they put it back on upside down. And they started having trouble with the mower, not cutting good. 
cussing it, swearing it, beating it up. And eventually they just uh, gave up on it and took it to the dump. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you. Let's just make sure you guys are on and doing your thing. Yep. All right, my friends. That's how much water was in there. I think that's enough to muck things up. But first, look carefully. The first fire plug going into the garbage. I know a lot of guys like them for their automotive. Some of the first fires have a have a triple nozzle on the ground electrode. Not a fan. Okay, so I'll, I'll be right back. I was just going to uh, go get a impact and a quarter inch drive. Let's do this. It's hard to take apart, hey? Eh? Now let's jack this guy up so I don't have to bend over and work on it. This is a Murray, by the way, because it only has one throttle return spring. And that's how you adjust your RPM right there. So now we need a 3 8 This is the only one of these I use a small, a short, uh, Shaft on a on the rest of them I like the six inch shaft. And the dipstick's probably a quarter inch. It is. And then I make a liar out of myself. Must have been the very first time and only time that's been on. Good. Fantastic. Now there's nothing wrong with this coil. But every time I every time I do one of these, I get the uh, nut nut driver out. And I just tighten up this air this I'm going to show you something. Don't go away. Alright, you see right here is the carburetor, the gas tank, the carburetor. The carburetor mixes the air, the air coming in to the gas from the tank and it goes into this tube along here. This tube right here, that's, that's the intake manifold for these. They're made out of plastic and whenever I have them apart now I just see if I can give them a small tighten. Sometimes they need it, sometimes they don't. No, it's good. We got a look at we got a loose dinghy muffler on there too. So now I gotta find out how long that rope is. Because that's a pain in the neck pulling that through that knot. Alright, I'm just taking out the old rope right now. Let it go. I shouldn't have let it go quite so freely. Now I'm gonna put five or six winds in there and then we'll test it out to see how, how it looks when we attach our new rope. There we are. We have six winds. There's our hole right there that's on the spool and there's our hole right there uh, in the line for the, uh, not in the line, in the shroud we'll call that. That end seems to be a little bit hard so don't give up. Try the other line. Try the other end. Because when you melt them with the candle or a lighter they change shape a little bit. There we are. Yay! So let me just uh, tie a knot in that one hand because Briggs does not make the best winds, rewinds. Now, I've got about a foot of line left over. That's just perfect, right? And we're doing this over here so I'm, I don't have to disturb you guys. Put a little kink in the end of that, like that. 
Call that a hoopy cack. I'm going to melt it once I get it through here. It's, just, it's got to turn left or it's got to turn right inside the cover. There it is. It just takes patience, my son. So I'm going to remelt that. We don't need any fraying going on. Well, I'm going to just turn, let that get going a bit and then blunt it. And then put a little knot in there. I usually just use this simple knot. Sometimes I heat them up so they stick a little better to each other. Like that. Good. Fantastic. Now let's put this cover back on and see if we got a lift off. And our brake is still adjusted so, and the spark plug is undone so I think we can stick a few screws into this guy. Yeah. And the two quarter inch for the dipstick. Zippo is proud of me. I got the feel. I do have three of these guns, eh? Okay. <laughs> oh boy. And I got a real, actually, honest to God nut driver. I'm going to use that on this. Now, one other thing I noticed while we have the gas, while we have the spark plug unplugged, I want to check and see if this blade is out of balance. Yeah, it's actually, oh, I hope we don't have a bent crankshaft. Either a bent crankshaft or a bent blade. Okay, I'm kind of, I'm up close here, just because the lawnmower's in the way. Let's move the lawnmower out, because this is very, very telling. Everything's precariously balanced on everything being precariously balanced. So this blade, this is the cutting cutting edge, is about two and three quarters from the table. Right there, do you see that? And over on this side, it's less than two and a half inches on the cutting surface. So now what we're going to do is put you back on your chair, and we're going to check the... Uh, Crankshaft. Need some light. Take a measurement from there to here. Eleven and three eighths. We rotate the crankshaft. One hundred eighty degrees. Let's do it again. We'll do it facing this way. So that should be. 11 and 3 eighths ish. Let's rotate it exactly. Hundred and eighty degrees and do the same measurement. This gives us an idea, right? Same, exact. That crankshaft is dead eye dick. Okay, I found a blade. It uh, I think it's square. One and a quarter on that cutting surface. Oh. Let's just check it out here. Two and a quarter on that cutting surface and two and you know, it's just shy. Yeah, it's good. Two and a quarter there. It wasn't centered. And and a quarter there. So I'm going to stick it on. Let's just see how it goes with our blade adapter here. So I'm using an extra washer to fill in this hole here. These are multi-use blades, They're like a pantyhose, you know, one size fits nobody. But we need a little bigger retainer. Hmm, might need a bigger 
bigger washer. I'll be right back. All right, we're gonna just see if it wanders all over the all over the place when it's uh, when the table's down. All right, because before it was just it had a mind of its own, didn't it? Hey, I remembered. So now we've got a blade on there that works, we've got a rope, we still don't have a shut off. That means a new cable. Okay, I need some, uh, a little bit more worker space right now. I'm, uh, as you guys know, this is the busy time of year, so I'm going to bring my table out. And I actually used, not the length measurement, but the geometry of a TV tray for this. not light, but what I'm looking for is a cable. Stuff's going to fall through, that's good. What I'm looking for is something with a Z bend on each end. And they do exist, but they're getting harder and harder to find. So many of the connectors now are like this one I got off the little tiller. They're pre-made, special done. You know, they make more money on sales, eh? Okay, now I'm going to come back here and see what I got. Oh. Okay, so number one. Number two. This is more sensible. Everything's there. Yep. 